Li Ni, an ex-crane driver from Laos, is working on a major construction project as part of the China-Laos Railway, a bridge which will span the waters of the Mekong River. is set to be a game changer. In the past, boats were the only way to cross this part of the Mekong. After the construction project is complete, people will have the option to cross the river by train, along with an upgraded ferry terminal for large vehicles. Based on his previous experience, Lini originally thought he'd be needed as a crane operator, but he soon found out there was a greater demand for equipment repairmen, so he decided to learn vehicle maintenance instead. Although Li Ni was stepping into new territory, his expertise in crane operation allowed him to grasp the mechanical side of things quickly enough. A few years later, Li Ni is one of the most experienced mechanics on site. <laughs> For the railway's construction to continue on pace, a large number of materials need to be acquired locally. To help expedite the process, Li Ni acts as an interpreter and middleman in the negotiation process. <laughs> Having worked and lived with Chinese colleagues for a long time, Li Ni's Chinese is passable enough to get the job done. Lini also has a second job as a bilingual teacher at this primary school and teaches the volunteer Chinese teachers his native Lao language in his spare time. On occasion, he even takes his Chinese colleagues out to experience some authentic Lao culture. Working on the Cross Mekong River Bridge has been a once-in-a-lifetime experience for Lini. Along with the stable income, Lini is grateful to have acquired a brand new set of skills. There's nothing like coming home to the family after a nice paycheck. The 
construction of the bridge is still ongoing. Li Ni loves working on the bridge. He's put so much into it that he sometimes thinks the bridge has become part of himself. Twenty-year-old Tran Thi Kam Tu is from Vietnam and she's been working at a factory that produces insoles for two years now. The construction of this factory was funded by a Chinese firm six years ago. Binduang province is located on the edge of the Mekong Delta. It attracts the third most in foreign investment behind the capital of Hanoi and Vietnam's largest city Ho Chi Minh, just a two-hour drive away. Most of the young employees at the factory come from rural areas. Dang Ti Hong is head of the Human Resources Department at the factory and has been here since it was established. Not only is she an integral part of the recruitment process, but she also maintains constant communication with the frontline employees to answer questions and to keep them up to date with the latest developments. Here in Vietnam, the most populous country in the Indochina Peninsula, the streets are always full of bright young faces. The factory frequently handles large seasonal orders with tight deadlines. At times like this, overtime is mandatory, which is never popular with the employees. <coughs> Hung began her working career at the age of 18. Today, she's an HR professional with experience in several foreign investing companies. Yeah. Hung is invaluable to the factory as she acts as an intermediary between the local workers and management, helping to diffuse any situation that may come about through cultural differences, language or dissatisfaction. Part of the reason Hung is so effective at her job is that being a local herself, she knows the workforce and their ways inside out. Cam Tu comes from a family of rice farmers, but she decided to leave her hometown at 16 to find a job in the city. At that time, Vietnam was experiencing a boom in industrialization, and the demand for young factory workers was high, so it was the perfect opportunity to get a foot in the door. Now she couldn't be happier. Cam Tu plans to work in the city for a few more years and save enough money to open a store. In the eyes of Hung and Cam Tu, this venture is as Vietnamese as it is Chinese. Moreover, the factory belongs to everyone who works in it, down to every last man and woman. Maybe there's nothing glamorous about the work, but there's a vibrant atmosphere here. The spirit of hope you get when everyone is striving as one for a better future. Ka 
Nam Nai Laveng used to be an ordinary farmer in Luang Nam Tha, Laos. But a joint project between Laos and China vaulted him to hero status in the eyes of the local villagers. The planting season has arrived and Cam is driving to Ban Nam Tsi, a village near the border of Laos and China. The district of Luang Nam Tha is located in northern Laos and is made up of villages scattered across rolling mountains and dense forests. Cam is bringing new seeds and high quality organic fertilizers to the local villagers. He is a man of high repute here, for it is he who tells the villagers when they should start planting their crops, how to monitor their growth, and when to harvest. <laughs> For the past decade, he's been helping them plant high-value-added cash crops. Thanks to him, many of these families have been able to rise out of poverty. A family in the village is celebrating the completion of their new house, and they have invited Cam as their distinguished guest. Years ago, a Chinese tobacco company built a cigarette manufacturing plant in his neighborhood and have been incentivizing the local people to grow tobacco ever since. Cam jumped at the opportunity and after receiving training from Chinese specialists, he was appointed manager of the planting department. Now he is considered a local expert giving him an edge that outsiders do not have. <laughs> On occasion, he'll take the local workers to visit outside villages looking for suitable land and farmers who might be interested in planting tobacco for themselves. In the past 10 years, this plantation has gradually become the most influential of its kind in Luang Nam Tha district, and Kam continues to promote the tobacco company wherever he can. Today, more and more Chinese companies are investing in Laos, which is helping to create more jobs and boost the local economy. With the new tobacco cutting and packing workshops in Laos, the company that Cam works for has created over 100 jobs for local young people. 
including some of whom who are recovering from drug addiction. The plantation has not only changed the local agricultural production, but it's also transforming the spirit of the communities involved. A new economic development zone is under construction in Luang Nam Ta, just two kilometers from Kam's home. Seeing another opportunity, Kam leased some of his land to a company that had just invested there. Kam believes his hometown's development still has a long way to go. But for now, it's a step in the right direction. Soleil is a musician from Siem Reap, Cambodia. Every weekday at noon, she picks her son up from school. Soleil's husband is currently working abroad, so she and her son are living with her parents. This is a typical urban Cambodian household, which includes the entire extended family. Here, everyone lives together on one plot of land, where everything is shared equally. As an adult woman, it's Soleil's responsibility to look after the family, but on most days, she has an even more important job to tend to. Every afternoon, the theatre that runs the play Smile of Angkor has a rehearsal before the performance, and all the local performers are required to be there. The show runs daily almost year around, so every one of the performers know their movements by heart. Soleil was among the first to join the theatre troupe and has been here almost every day for the last eight years. Ni Sai has been with the troupe just as long and is one of the show's most seasoned performers. Also in the performance is her husband, whom she met here on this very stage. As much as Soleil enjoys living with her extended family, she still wants to have her own place. While she and her husband just built a new house last year, unfortunately, they still don't have the money to finish it properly. All she wants is to give her son a better home and a comfortable environment to grow up in. Each performance at the theatre puts her one step closer to that dream. Unlike Soleil, Nisai is a professional dancer at Siem Reap's Provincial Department of Culture and Fine Arts. 
Ever since she was little, she has been perfecting the Apsara dance, a 1,000-year-old Cambodian court dance, which uses stylized movements and gestures to express emotion and desire. It is said that in ancient times, female dancers were looked upon with awe and reverence. Having been a dancer her whole life, Nisai's wish is to become a dance teacher, so she can pass down the Apsara dance to others. This means practicing and improving her skills every day. Every evening, Nisai and her husband have to hurry through dinner to get to the performance on time. The Smile of Angkor is the most famous theatrical performance in Siem Reap and is always listed as a must-see in tour guides. Although the theatre was founded by a company from China, all of the performers here are locals. To enhance the look of the performance, the investors have brought in Chinese professionals to assist with the stage design and technical aspects of the show, so the beauty of Cambodian culture can be put on full display. Eight years of successful performances, testimony to the success of the concerted efforts of Chinese people and Cambodians working hand in hand. The Lansang Mekong River system runs through multiple Asian countries and nurtures many colorful cultures that coexist and complement one another. For the people that live here, the river permeates almost every aspect of their lives. It is a source of food, a means of transport, and a symbol of solidarity for it highlights the commonality of responsibilities, interests and beliefs of the people, regardless of their class or background. As the Grand River rushes ever onward, so do the people who live alongside its banks. Like the relentless currents of the river, they too are destined for something bigger, a place where an ocean of possibilities awaits.